Hello everyone and welcome to the Sea Dragon Battle. Uh, this is game one of a best of one between First Departure and Team NXL. Thank you of course to MSI for sponsoring this tournament as well as Adata and don't talk very kindly allowing us to cast this. I'm Lily and Insidious Idol Chu Bethel. What's your name today? You there? Is your mic muted? Hello. Ten seconds remaining. Okay, I think he died. Five okay, well, either way, uh, first departure, of course, is a Singaporean team. NXL, I am. I can't hear you. Cannot hear anything you're saying. You sure you fixed your mic and you didn't just mute it? I'll call you again. <laughs> hello. Hello, hello, okay. hello, hello. I can hear you now. Excellent. Um, so yes, yeah, so I uh, NXL I think is an Indonesian team then. They did actually beat out in City Sidle yesterday, so you weren't there last night. What are your thoughts on the loss, though? Did your mic die again? Are you pressing buttons? No, you're there. Hello? I'm here. Okay. Right, I'm here, right? Yeah. So, what did you think of your team's loss to NXL last night? <laughs> um, I wasn't there, so I didn't play. And there are no bots on it, so I don't know how they lost. But... Um, <laughs> I wasn't shocked that he lost, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, NXL do play pretty well. Spaceman plays a really good Shadow Shaman. So I'm expecting him to pick that up. I've seen him play Shadow Shaman twice now, out of the two games of cast of NXL. And he he's pretty good at rotation, getting the tower stand, etc. And First Departure just going for their Omni Knight pick. But they don't have KS, so who's going to be grabbing that Omni? Um, I think usually Dava plays the Omni. He plays it as off lane. Does he play as off lane? Let me get my thing. Let me get my facts right. Um, I've seen Dava play uh, as Omni not off lane before. Yeah. Or if yeah, I think so. And I've seen Ohio play Omni Knight as as off lane too. So, uh, I think Titan copied for departure. So <laughs> I, I'm guessing. I'm guessing Dafa is the one that plays the Omni Knight. Fair enough. Well, I've seen I've seen KS play the Omni Knight before, but I suppose uh, Dafa has as well. Um, so it's gonna be Miracle playing that Void most likely, but Miracle does play a pretty good Void when he's when he's not time walking terribly. So uh, yeah, and um, yeah. I'm, Miracle is probably going to play the Faces Void. This, this is that classic draft, you know, Faces Void, Omni Knight. Seen it quite a, quite a number of times. Omni Knight usually goes, like you say, um, KS will usually play it, or Dafa, because, yeah, just this solo lane. So KS will either play it in mid, or Dafa will play it off lane. Either way, he will get a solo XP. Yeah. Because Omni Knight really needs the levels. Yeah. And item wise, do you think that going for the mech or the Argonim Scepter is better on the Omni Knight? Uh, depends on the farm. I think if he's in the mid lane and he's getting decent farm, definitely a back first because yeah, back is really important for the for the mid game engagers and um, downing the first uh, first tier and second tier towers. So um, yeah, but if, usually if he's playing as a mid, he's more of like a utility core role. So mech into agonims would be the item of choice. Yeah, but off lane, hmm, depends on the farm. I don't think an, uh, an off lane or we will get that much farm at all. Well, it depends on who he's laning against, since if NXL decide to run an aggressive try lane, Omni's going to be going against that Tide Hunter, and he should be good to win that lane. Tide normally sort of wins lane with the Kraken Shell and the Anchor Smash, but if Omni just goes for the Purification to harass the Tide Hunter, it's pure damage, so it doesn't matter if you've got that Kraken Shell, it's going to be getting you at half HP. <laughs> Actually, I won't. Uh, I don't agree with that. I think Tide Hunter just beats any any melee hero. Yeah, because of the Anchor Smash. Anchor Smash really pisses the the melee heroes off. 
Mm. So you can't really get the you can't really get the last hits. Even though there's purification, um, you can't really count on the purification to get last hits. Yeah, I think in 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 the case of Titan versus of Midnight, you, there won't be anybody killing each other. Yeah, yeah, it'll be really very very hard to for one person to kill the other. So it's 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 all down to CS and Titan getting an anchor smash or Midnight won't be able to get CS. You really can't count on, can't can't count on the purification to get CS. Huh? Mm. Well, we'll have to see. It depends on if they are running an aggressive trail lane now, but with the Wraith King pickup, it could be a support or it could be a carry. Wraith King is decent against the Void, purely because you've got that reincarnation, so they kind of use that chronosphere and then you're ready to just pop out again and just fight the Void one-on-one. -on -one. But at the same time, when you're versing heroes like the Omni Knight, maybe you don't want to go for a carry like the Wraith King. You probably want to pick up a Diffusal Blade carrier, so maybe something like the Marana or the, uh, the Morphling or even... Juggernaut, we've seen get Diffusal Blade since he can now Diffusal Blade during the Omni Slash. So if he gets the Arganim's Diffusal Blade, he can still uh, kill people with the Omni Slash, even if there is a Guardian Angel going off. No, I don't think so. I think we can. Um, I'm not. I'm. I'm not very sure about the the mechanics of uh, Omni Slash, but from what I've heard, uh, there's a magical damage component and there's a physical damage component. So. Guardian Angel just completely blocks out the physical damage. So, no, but you can use items now, I was saying. So if you pop oh, a during during um, uh, Omni Slash, yeah. Yeah, so you can Diffusal so Blade someone if you get Diffusal Blade, yeah. Yeah, that's if the Jogger Juggernaut is like playing a core and he gets a Diffusal Blade. Yeah. yeah I think the the one thing about Omni Knight that we really, is really, really very, very is it is that it forces the opponents to be a hero, which has to be a Diffusal Carrier. So I've seen games where first departure they pick Omni Knight and then the opponent is forced to pick up a, a, a Mirana, yeah. which is like a carry which they don't really want to pick, but they have to pick it because it's probably the only hero which suits, yeah, the the role of a diffusal carrier. So, yeah. Yeah, this is one thing about Omni Knight which is really really irritating. <laughs> really 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 irritating. Really 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 irritating. Yeah, but yeah, like, why teams don't usually pick Omni Knight up is because um. Even though he's really, 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 really irritating, he's really very hard to, to lane. Yeah, so he's actually very, very weak in the, in the early laning stages. He can't, I don't, I've yet to see an Omni Knight uh, as a support in like the past past year, probably, yeah, probably in the past year, because in the laning stages, he needs levels, he doesn't, and, and if he's like laning in a tri lane or in a dual lane, he's not really getting that much levels. Mm. So, very, very easily. Yeah, you know, very easily controlled by very, very aggressive tridents. Yeah. yeah. Well, that is true, but it looks like NXL... Well, they definitely could run a tri lane aggressively with this. Wraith King, Shadow Shaman, Takiro. Uh, I suppose it's... It feels like it's lacking damage, maybe? I mean, I don't know. So we have this tri lane... Yeah, NXL. If something about this lane doesn't feel right, or this lineup, I suppose, doesn't feel right. They've got Pushing a Power with the Shadow Shaman and the Chikiro. They've got Team Fight with the Tide Hunter and the Chikiro. They've got Kyrie with the Wraith King, but I feel like something's not right. I feel they just need one more hero with burst. Yeah. Like what you said, because the Jakiro is not gonna gonna burst anything. He's just gonna lay down the Ice Path and the Liquid Fire on the tower. Uh, burst is gonna come from Shadow Shaman's Elder Shock. Yeah, the 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 Elder Shock is just yeah. The burst is crazy. So I think we're gonna see a PA mid. Yeah, I doubt it'll be anything like a Tai Hunter or Raiding mid. And the Shadow Shaman mid is really old school. Yeah, so PA mid against probably hmm, not very really sure. I've seen First Departure run a a duo mid before. It's just Void plus one. Hmm. So, well, maybe it is going to be the Omni mid, even though Chaos isn't here. I think Darkseer is going to be a bit an offlaner, but it's scripted. Script is going to be taking mid, isn't he? He used to be the mid player for First Departure before he said uh, some I, things. I don't know about that. Scripted has always been the support player. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, but I guess since he's standing in for Chaos, he has to fill the shoes of Chaos. So he's played he has to take the mid role. I thought Scripted was the... Was it, I thought Scripted was the mid player for First Departure, and then he said some things that he shouldn't have said, and... Uh, no, he was always support. Oh. Yeah, in the original first departure. So he uh, played mid. Holoson played the mid. Um, oh. Then in the TI4 qualifiers, um, it was Chains. Yeah. Chains K, Starfire. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
So then when Scripted it's... left, who replaced him originally? The first time when Scripted left, who? Uh, in first departure, the supports were Scripted and, and KS, Kai, uh, the other support. Oh, so Lobby uh, joined so, then. Yeah, so when Scripted left, then Lobby joined. Huh. So you're gonna see a Rubik. I think the Rubik's gonna have a good time because he has a lot of nice spells to steal. Mm. You'll always get a steal off the Raking stun and the Ice Path. So, already two very, very good spells. And, you know, a whole range of spells for Shadow Shaman to steal. From, yeah, to steal from Shadow Shaman. And also, finally, the Time of the Ravage. Yeah. Should be a pretty nice game for Lubby there. It looks like it will be a mid PA, like you said. Paimon picking up that PA. He is the mid player for NXL. So they are going to be having sort of a tri-core, but it's a bit worrisome because it is a tri melee core plus PA into a void. Chronosphere removes evasion, so a void is typically seen as sort of a counter to that PA since if he catches her in the chronosphere, who cares if you've got 50% evasion in a chronosphere, you've got none. So I'm a, I'm a bit interested in this PA pick into a void. I mean, what do you think about it? Do you think void is a, I mean, sorry, PA is a good counter to the void? Not at all, I don't think so. But I think the one big counter that faces Void is um, picking really sort of like um, tanky calls. Mm -hmm. So when the Chronosphere comes down, he, <laughs> he doesn't know who to choose. He, he doesn't know who to hit. You know, everybody's <laughs> so tanky, he can't really kill anybody. So yeah, but first departure, they have the Faces Void, Omni Knight, and the Skyra. So he can heal up the Faces Void for the 360 pure damage and yeah. the Skyrath is going to throw his Mystic Flare. So, yeah, I think PA will be um, until the Faces Void gets an MKP. Yeah, but PA uh, mid lane, he's going to be pretty irritating with the Stifling Dagger. Yeah, that's why people pick PA mid. Because yeah. uh, with the Blur, maybe a Pro Man's Shield and yeah, 4 levels of Stifling Dagger. I don't think any mid hero can really can, can really out harass that. So is this Kai grabbing the mid lane or is it going to be a mid Skyrath mage? <laughs> Beats me. <laughs> Let me see what's going on <laughs> in the first departure camp. I think it will be... Who is Kopio? I, forgot who Kopio. I think isn't Kopio it... is Kai. Yeah, right? it's Kai, isn't it? Yeah, so... Um, no, oh, they swapped. The heroes, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, off lane. Off lane Omni, mid Darkseer? Uh, <laughs> I, think I think either way will do, but I would prefer a mid Omni Knight because there you will you'll definitely get the levels. Yeah. And, and the farm. You know, if you went off if you went to the off lane, I don't think he would secure much level to farm, but uh, for the Darkseer Either lane, he will be able to get the level to the farm. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Well, go is the word. So, Miracle, describing standard items. Well, actually, going through the players. Uh, on the side of NXL, we're going to be having AMZ grabbing that. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> what is that noise? Sorry, that's my, that's my brother. <laughs> Alright, so Wraith King is going to be played by AMZ, Jakira can be played by Zephyr, Spaceman of course grabbing that Shadow Shaman, Paimon on the mid PA, and he 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 on the offlane Tidehunter. <laughs> really? His name is he he I don't know. He he he. <laughs> so, Scripter will be on the offlane Darks here, Dafa on the mid only night. Uh, the tri lane is going to consist of uh, Fizz's Void, played by Miracle, Labi on the Rubik, and Kopi O, aka Kai, on the Skyrath beach. Kopi O. Kopi O means black coffee, doesn't it? Uh, uh, Kopi means coffee. Oh, I'm not very sure, but I think it's. I think it's just normal coffee. Okay. Yeah, I'm not very sure. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that Singaporean. Oh. Aren't you Singaporean though? How do you be that Singaporean? <laughs> I'm Singaporean, but not that Singaporean. Okay. I remember I went to. Uh, you know you have those drink you have drink stands in Australia we don't have like in food courts we don't have like you know you get each different cuisine here and then we have a drink and dessert area it's not like that you just order whatever you want from each store and get drinks there anyway so I went to the drink store and I just ordered like the name with the long sorry the drink with the longest name and it was absolutely disgusting whatever it is but I think the Singapore? toast yeah in, Sing in Singapore what, what, what was it called 
I don't know, it was like, I think it was Copio, and then it was like Talaka Balatu or something, I don't know. Um, I don't I don't know any of your words here. Huh. Your words. But yeah, it was, it was awful. It was absolutely disgusting. So uh, I would advise don't order things by getting the longest name. I have no idea what, <laughs> what drink you're talking about. Yeah. Well, if you don't even know what O means from Copio, then... Yeah, definitely. Not really allowed to comment, nah. Oh, well, why, why are there all your pauses? Can't people get amazing internet? You never have to disconnect. All right. So, based on the drafts, what are you feeling? I feel, I feel that um, let's see. For both safe lanes, it will be pretty much quite standard. Um, Shadow Shaman can box out. Ducks here uh, quite a bit until he's he's level two. Then he'll just give up on boxing on the ducks here because he can't really do anything with ducks here. Yep. Um, on the side of first departure, Skyrim will probably be boxing out while uh, Labi on Rubik he will do the yeah he'll do the zoning out. I mean he'll, he'll do the pulling. Sorry, Rubik will do the pulling and getting a level. So yeah. Um, Pretty standard until the rotations come out. I'm not really sure uh, when the rotations will come out. Let's just see how they play it. And yes, my teammates just commented that Kopio is, is black coffee. Yes! My Singlish is so good, la. It's oh, not I exactly think. Singlish. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I'm in, no room to, I'm in no room to comment. Gosh, I'm such a bad Singaporean. Sad. Good Singaporeans are really annoying. In what way? <laughs> Do you know Skyrath Mage has got like claws for feet? He's got like chicken legs. Skyrath Mage is officially half chicken. The more you know. Alright, well. Copio. Lubby. Lurking in the jungle together. Finally, the game's been again. So do you reckon NXL against this Dark Series, other than just boxing him out, given they've got this Jakiro, is it going to be worth just kind of pushing down the towers quite early since Jakiro is one of those heroes at level 3 or so you can start pushing a tower. By the time the first catapult spawns, he should be level 2 um, in the, uh, the the liquid fire. So is it is it a good thing to push against the Dark Series since he's going to get farm anyway or is it not worth letting him get experience? I think generally it's, it's quite impossible to... Um, push against ducks here because all he just has to do is uh, iron shell a creep whether is it a, a friendly creep or, or an enemy creep and yeah your creep wave is, is gone but you know they can they can really do some decent damage to the tower yeah, if, if they're looking to push I don't think they can really down the tower they will do decent damage but I think it's not it's not a really good trade to try and do damage to the tower and at the same time, give the Ducks here experience, mm. quite a lot of experience. So I think if they really want to go for a push, they got to decide whether the the push is able to you know, go all the way and down the tower. Mm. And a couple of people were asking who is the co-caster. The co-caster is the carry it's player from Insidious Idol. I'm yeah. Ice Ice Ice. Yeah, a lot of yeah. people say my, my voice sounds like Ice Ice Ice, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not Ice Ice Ice. I think they say every single Singaporean sounds like Ice Ice Ice. Mm, oh. Really. Going in on Scripted, we do see the Shackle coming out as well as the stun from AMZ. Scripted getting down to half HP already, but won't be able to secure the kill. Jakiro is not in the area, he's just sort of flying his way through the jungle. Didn't even stack the camp, he just sort of walked back and forth for a couple of minutes. Um, by minutes, I mean like a second. So, Scripted... Yeah, I, think, hmm? I think if the Jakiro was there, um, you'd definitely be able to get the, the kill of Dux here. Now Dux is level 2, so he has Surge, he has sort of like an insurance. Yeah, and actually that could be quite costly because if they got the uh, ducks ducks here kill, you know he would have, he would be pretty much zoned off for the rest of the time. Yeah. Hmm. So actually the error came when uh, Jukiro forgot to pass an observer to his off laner, the Hunter. So he had to walk all the way to the top lane to give him the uh, the observer. So a lot of wasted time there. So that's that's why they couldn't get the kill off. He was out of position, couldn't get a kill off on the ducks here. We ended up just giving the ward to Paimon anyway in the mid lane, who's going uh, 
head to head with Darfa here. Both of them do have the bottle up, so nothing really much happening other than just Darfa healing a bunch. Oh uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> he gave the observer to PA instead of the Tide Hunter. Yeah. yeah. Having said that, that means the Tide Hunter won't be having a really good time at the top lane. I think, yeah, he's not having a good time, so he just took a hit and went mid. He's probably not going to get anything at the top lane. But he can't just stack the Ancients. So one nice thing about both Darkseer and Tidehunter is that they've got other places they can farm, so Tide can farm the Ancients, and someone pointed out to me yesterday that Tidehunter can actually, if he wants to, stack the Ancients a whole bunch, and then if he doesn't have high levels in the Kraken Shell, he can actually smoke up to take the Ancients, since they won't uh, run away if you're smoked. Thanks for the tip. I didn't know that. Yeah. But honestly, I think that's a waste of a smoke. Well, if your team's not really ganking anyway, like if you don't have a particularly gank-heavy team, then... Maybe That's otherwise. true, but everybody's everybody's opting for gank gank heavy lineups because gank heavy lineups or like more or less aggressive lineups really dictate the game. So yeah, that's why people opt for the heavy roamers, the dual roamers. Mm. Yeah, you can really get a lot of map control very easily. Well, Darpa is gonna be okay, he just gets to repel up, repels himself. But he's giving a really hard time here to this poor PA. Every time I look at uh, PA trying to get a CS, then Darfa just denies it. So, sad day for him, but... Hmm. So, uh, let me confirm, the next game is when this game is over. Is Should be. Right? Or are we still sticking to the schedule and finding another caster? Is, is that than an option. Uh, sh uh, why? Uh, no, because I'm, I'm worried I have to leave halfway. <laughs> no, it, sh it should be me doing it. I mean, I'm hosting the lobby, so I don't know how you're going to play without me hosting the lobby. Sure. No. You can try. You can try and play <laughs> without me. Sure. But, okay. Well, anyway. Uh, so the catapult has spawned now. Zephyr's level 3. If they wanted to start pushing, they could. It looks like... Uh, are they? I'm not really sure. AMC seems to be auto-attacking the wave a fair bit. Oh no, he's denying it, so he's forced denying the way of pulling it back. Jakiri, meanwhile, just farming the uh, the camp here. Jakiri's a pretty decent jungler, actually, with that liquid fire. If you stack these camps a couple of times, you can then go farm it yourself with the liquid fire. So, I'm surprised Jakiri wasn't doing that, but there is Space Man now with Invisibility Rune, and they could definitely try and get a kill here. We're going to be seeing Scripted surging himself up, but the Shackle's coming out. Stun, Wraith Fire Blast from AMZ, going to be following up. Ice Path is there, too. And Scripted is going down there for First Blood. AMZ getting the kill. If he wants to go for a minus, he can definitely afford it now, but at the same time, Smoke Gang from First Departure, Lubby and Copy, Copy all, are uh, smoked up together. The Tide might reveal the smoke from the high ground. Oh, that's a close call. Lubby is just... Yeah, so close. That is... <laughs> that must be just ridiculous close. Anyway, Paimon, though, is in trouble. Telekinesis is coming out and just destroyed there. I mean, he wasn't even positioned defend aggressively. He was standing as far away as you can stand, but... Cast range, man. 2G. Good rotation by Copy O and Lavi. Copy O. Indeed it is. And Void, Miracle. Going for the Orb of Venom. How do you how do you feel about that? I think it's okay. I'm not uh, I think it depends on the personality of the player. I don't usually go uh in a normal venom on any hero. The, probably the only two heroes I go all venom on are uh, Life Stealer and Slark, just yep. because yeah, Slark is your your competitor Scardi, and for Life Stealer is pretty good for one v one situations. Hmm. What is it? Twelve percent slow on Malay here is, well, Miracle just juking the creeps through the trees here. I'm not really sure what his grand plan is. Uh, I guess we just doesn't have to tank him, then his tower can be hit there by the uh, supports and the catapult. Fantastic. So though. I think NXL actually doing quite good, um, considering, yeah, they, they're playing against first departure. With regards to the levels, I think it's quite okay, uh, except the off laner, which is yeah, he's not he's not really having a good time compared to Dux here. Miracle that could be in trouble. He's got the Chrono. Nah, he should be fine. He can time walk. He's just playing super aggressive, so they can they can take the tower. Yeah. Come on, take out the tower. Go. But the Ice Path's going to be coming out into Miracle, but like you said, level 2 on here, here, here. Though, Chronosphere is going to come out. They do have the Fortifier, I know they've used the Fortifier, so Spaceman is just going to get tossed up in the air. Miracle going to get the tower there, but he's... 
No, he makes it away that the Anchor Smash misses and no levels up into the gush. Ice Path coming through, only gonna land on Copy O, so Miracle's just gonna get a tower and a kill and escape with his life. Calculated, all calculated. Yeah, he he casted the Chronosphere. I I think he wanted to take down the tower, but he accidentally right clicked the Tide Hunter. But oh. I think uh, the only thing that mattered is just as the Shadow Shaman was gonna cast his Ether Shock, change it into Strength Threat, so that mm. saved his life. So pro. Wow. So Miracle obviously having a pretty good time sitting on 50 CS at the 7 minute mark. That means he's barely missed any. It's pretty close to perfect, isn't it? Well, they actually find Scripted in their jungle. Can they get the Shackle off? He's pretty much out of mana, but no, nope. he will be able to make it away. Omni is there to help him out, so they're going to be okay. So like you said, level-wise, Tidehunter, Shadow Shaman are pretty far behind. Uh, scripted especially, level 5 versus level 3, it doesn't mean he's sort of outlaying in the offlaner. But Tidehunter has got this stack here, which is now 3 stacked, I believe. So when he goes and clears out, there will be a good amount of gold into his pocket as well as levels. So he's maybe just waiting for a little bit more farm before he goes and does that. But once he's got his uh, arcanes up, he can do that very, very easily in level 4 too, without even taking even a scratch of damage. Yeah, looking at the levels, um, the supports for first departure are let me see five and five and four. Mm. Yes, for team and XL, it's four and four. So it's just the disparity is just one. Uh, but the big disparity is actually the Daxia and the, and the character. So yeah. yeah, but I think it'll be okay because um, Daxia got his levels from the jungle. And Tanata will get his levels from the ancients, so yeah. Dox should just go his experience first. And the big thing I would worry about for uh, oh god, Tidehunter. playing with fire. He's, yeah. he's gonna die. He's gonna die. Yeah, he's dead. There's no way he's gonna. Yep, yeah, he's dead. Nice world planted there by Kobio. I'm counting the number of stacks here. One, two, three. There are three stacks. So I think if you wanted to stack, you should have went earlier, because fifty-four. Yeah, the 54th second is a bit too late. Yeah, oh, Miracle actually going in on the mid lane. He's going to be finding Paimon there. Paimon has a DD rune, but he's not going to be trying to fight. Miracle does have the Chronosphere up. We'll be catching him just on the edge there. The heal coming out from Darth are going to secure the kill. And Wraith King actually rotates in as well. He's got his ultimate, but he's just getting bashed to death by Miracle. But Hex coming out into Miracle, but in comes the Omni Knight with the Guardian Angel. Darfa still barely staying alive, but he's getting healed up, and he will in fact turn around and just heal himself with Purification, taking down the Wraith King. Now Wraith King is stuck in the middle of four heroes. His two supports are there, but they're both out of mana. Wall coming down from the Dark Seer, Miracle now diving in. AMZ as well as uh, Spaceman going to be going down. Tidehunter could rotate, but he's level four, so there's no real point. And this under leveling on this offlane tide hunter is really showing the importance since Darkseer comes in with the wall versus no rotation from the tide. Yeah, they're really suffering from the from the lack of a ravage or a lack of a tank in front. I mean, um, the Wraith was in front, but I felt what he could have done better was when the Guardian Angel was up, he shouldn't have man modded, he should have just backed off and waited yeah. for the Guardian Angel. Because he, he took too much damage during the, the Guardian Angel duration. And when he died, the wall came up, and yeah, the wall was a good good way to zone the NXL reinforcements. But yeah, he, he was really he was really out of position after he came up for his for a second line. Yeah, uh, and so that's sort of the hard thing about the lineup from NXL. So like you were saying, you felt like they needed another sort of new hero in their last pick. Uh, but they went for the PA, and the problem I'm going to be so foreseeing is this Guardian Angel, since, well, actually, he's going for a Necronomicon, Darpa is, so there won't be an Argonim Scepter, but regardless, six seconds at level one, when you've got two sort of physical DPS carries, and no, you know, Diffusal Blade carrier, it's pretty insane, and it's going to be giving them a really hard time in this mid-game phase when the team fights start, and Paimon now could be going down yet again, silenced up, will he make it away, he's got the bottle, but he's not bottling himself, oh, he's very, very low, will be able to bottle himself up though, and Zephyr now just diving, he wants to try and get this tower, uh, scripted getting quite low, tower is going to go down there to Zephyr, no divine coming out, uh, AMZ trying to get a stun off, but not going to be happening, Kobe is just going to run away. And meanwhile, Miracle gets the bottom T1 tower before rotating right to the top lane. Chronosphere's back up. He's got Repel on him. He wants to go in on Hee Hee. Mask of Madness is going to be popped. Hee 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 Hee. Has got the Ravage, but... Echo Smash, yes. There you go. Like but all he needs to do is Chrono now. Oh, or he could just not Chrono. Why didn't he just Chrono? <laughs> 
All calculated by miracle. Yep, calculated it. Super great. Well, good rotation by Paimon there. I think the title could have just, just made sure there. Yeah. But I guess he was just, yeah, baiting. Calculated. He was baiting. Pretty, pretty hard. Yeah, I think um, NXL made a quite a big mistake. Actually, is Paimon going to go down? No, their last hit. Blur OP. So I think NXL are really going to suffer late game if they don't have a Diffusal carrier. I don't reckon PA is going to get a, a Diffusal. I might be wrong, but yeah, but I, I, I don't really think Diffusal on a PA is a really good item. She could go for like a really ganking, like, ganking PA. You know, Diffusal Blade and... Yeah, he, he's going for the drum, so there won't be any Diffusal anytime soon. So when the Guardian Angel goes up, it's just, you know, just six seconds, currently six seconds, it's gonna be seven, seven seconds of, of invulnerability. It won't be, yeah, I mean, your Wraith King and your PA will be quite useless in that seven seconds. But oh, you pretty much need a Diffusal Blade against a core Omni Knight like this. And actually, you can see now that the divergence of the whole team, they know that they're there, the courier did just get smacked there by uh, them and now actually Miracle coming in, he 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 is in trouble, silent stuff, down he goes. Oh they're pinging him out, they're pinging the PA out, but now they're going for him. I guess I'm more concerned call. with getting a tower. Zephy now could be in trouble, I think Miracle wants to dive in on this. He's sort of just running forward, yet, but here he goes. With the Iron Shell, does he even need to do anything? Well, he's got the Repel on, so it doesn't even matter if they do throw down the Ice Path, and this can be the death of Zephyr. Actually, a lot of synergy in this team for first departure. You can throw the heal on the Freezer's Void, you can throw the Ion Shell, throw the Repel. Tons of things you can do. Yeah. I mean, there's also really nice synergy just between the damage. So, Ancient Seal and um, the. What's it called? The Bash? Time Lock. Uh, really well synergized because Time Lock, of course, is magical damage. So, you do the Ancient Seal plus Time Lock, and that means for each Bash, he's doing plus 70 plus damage a hit so it's 70 damage and then with the uh reduced 45, 60, yeah yeah 45, 45 yeah so i don't know 60. i can't math i'm not asian yeah. um it's a lot of damage though so that is something else that uh and i have to worry about whoever gets caught in the chronosphere if they get silenced as well as hit with the scarath ultimate or by the void they're pretty much dead hard time for them sad day and they're actually just going for the Roshan. Yeah, first departure have a lot of map control right now. You can see their wards. Uh, they totally secured the, you know, the, the second tier tower onwards from mid to top. Yeah. And they have one ward in their jungle. But Team NXL, they know, they know they're doing Roshan. Yep, popping the drums are running in. But in comes Ravage, getting the uh, Ravage off onto three there. Nicely done. Anchor smashes before Lobby can steal. Fakes the sword. We'll be able to get a kill immediately. But Copy going to be going down at return. Darfur throws out the Guardian Angel. Chronosphere now. Nice Chronosphere landing onto two, but Paimon's still on the sideline. Zephyr throwing out his ultimate. But will they be able to get one down? Looks like Miracle will take a four there. So it's a three for two trade at the moment. Well, actually make that. God, too many people die. Miracle buys back there, but Lobby's going to go down. Paimon with the triple kills. He's getting massive amounts of kills from this. Scripted now could be next. Darth is running in. Paimon's deciding, do I stay? Do I go? Miracle's back in. Miracle going Chronosphere, though. Paimon's going to leap to AMZ. Paimon taking a lot of damage, popping the drums, turns around, stuns onto Miracle. Miracle getting surged off, though. AMZ running away. The Necronomicon unit standing in the middle of things. So Space Man's here to help out. Is he going to go and help AMZ? AMZ is trying to arm the toggle, which is not going to be enough. Now Spaceman could be in trouble, but he, he he's rotating in as well. They're trying to go into Spaceman. No wards for the Shadow Shaman. He just gets absolutely destroyed there by Miracle on the Iron Shell. Way too much damage. Down he goes. He 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 now turning around and oh the crit onto Miracle's head. The buyback and the dieback. Paimon now dodging the ultimate from Kopio who has come back into the team fight. Zephyr turning around onto Darfur, but Darfur's going to get searched up. Paimon could be taking a fall. One more hit. He is going to turn around so onto Darfur, but leaves away to a creep. The urn though could be taking down his eat ball up. He is going to have the bottle in the urn, and, but he 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 is getting chased down by Kopio. But he hey, just dodging. Darfa, Darfa stands no chance, but the nuke is coming onto him. Oh, the bottle actually doesn't have any left, and now Zephyr's in trouble. Zephyr is going to be taking a fall, and it looks like Paimon is going to go down as well. He's trying to run away desperately, but yeah. down he goes. <laughs> I, I don't even know who won that fight. 7 to 16 on the board. I think overall, NXL sort of won that 
terms of um, uh, they prevented uh, first departure from taking Roshan even though they had quite yeah they had quite heavy casualties but uh, Miracle had to buy out he, it was a dieback so yeah pretty much quite even but I would say it will, it's better for Team and Excel because uh, I think their priority was not giving first departure that, that, that Roshan yeah I want to count how many kills were for each side because I don't I really know Triple kill for uh, Paimon though was pretty good. That's already his Helm of the Dominator done. He just got the drum, so Helm of the Dominator completed as well. It means he can start stacking if he wants to, otherwise sort of get a creep to follow him around or get a creep to scout out. It looks like they're going back in for Roshan, and Miracle can just solo it pretty easily if Darfur just stands on the side and heals when he needs to. They do just deward the ward as well. So NXL no, but it looks like they're not interested in fighting, possibly because Wraith King's ultimate's on cooldown for two more minutes. And this is one reason why they... Uh, the pro players suggested that you don't actually level up Wraith King's ultimate until you know you can use it in a team fight. Um, so, you know, it's not going to be wasted. Oh, but they will just lose the, the ring control there. Miracle now running in. He wants to go into AMZ. Chronosphere going up with the Ice Path. Landing onto Miracle doesn't matter because he does have the repel on him. And even he 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 going to get caught out. He's got the Ravage. Is he going to be able to use it? No, he's going to die before he does. But they do manage to cap Darfur. But there's going to be the uh, Guardian Angel going off anyway. Miracle now chasing after Paimon. Paimon. Only level 1 blur, it's not going to be enough. He does try and leap his way to Zephyr, but it's not going to be enough. Raking buys back, coming into the team fight, but he did already die. So if he dies again, this could be GG. Well, not GG, but a lot of damage. Either way, AMZ is going to be taking a well, miracle down before he goes down himself. Trying to arm the toggle, but the damage over time from the Iron Shell is going to be too much. Last one standing is going to be Spaceman. He's being chased down by Darva, who's just making him move so slowly. He's going to miss the uh, <laughs> purification, so Spaceman will be able to just run away there. Yeah, I don't think he'll be able to catch him anyways. He needs an orb of venom. Yeah. yeah Omni Knight with the Deganora, Dejanora, with an orb of venom. It's just irritating. It's 34 plus 12. <laughs> it's, it's OP. Can't run away. Cannot escape from the slows. Well, we're going in for this tier 2 tower now. Ravage is up, so Tidehunter did not get an opportunity to use Ravage in that last fight, but it looks like Paimon's saying, no, let's just farm. I think, what item do you reckon Paimon should get? Should he get a BKB? Or is it going to be more important getting something like the Diffusal Blade? Honestly, I don't really know. I think a Diffusal, yeah, actually, I honestly think a Diffusal would be good. Yeah, he doesn't really need the BKB at the moment because um, right now what he should be doing is just throwing daggers on the side. Uh, waiting for the spells to come out, especially the Mystic Flare. Yeah. yeah. Once the Mystic Flare is gone, he can more or less go. Yeah. He just he can just go man mode. <laughs> He's gonna watch for the Chrono and the and, and the Mystic Flare. So, yeah. But even if you got a BKB, yeah, it won't it won't do anything against the Chronosphere. Oh, this is this is a really really irritating draft from 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 Percy Butcher. Ion Shell. Oh, three man Chronosphere coming out from Miracle, killing Spaceman immediately. And now the vacuum! Oh my god, he, he can't even get off that Ravage. Last one standing is going to be Zephyr in the team fight. Paimon actually jumps in, but I think he immediately regrets that decision. Too much nuke damage onto him, no BKB, no anything, and he's just going to get taken down. Love you blinking for the last hit. So it's just Zephyr versus five now. The Rax is probably going to take a fall. Yeah. And the GG is going to be called. Cool. This is a very, very irritating drop on this departure. It's an uh, Ion Shell and a Repel on the Phoenix Boy. And all you just got to do is just time walk into the Shadow Shaman and the, and the, and the, and the Jukiro, and then, you know, they can't really do anything. Mm. Uh, and it's just like 4 to 5 hits before the, uh, the Shadow Shaman goes down. So that's like a 3v for, for, for Miracle. Well, GG, well played to both teams. Thank you, of course, to MSI for sponsoring this tournament, as well as Ad Data. Thanks to Bethel for casting with me, and I'll, I'll make sure I won't BM you too much in your next game. Sure, just, 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 just go ahead, really. Just, you can scrutinize me as much as you want. Perfect. You hear it at first, guys. If I am insulting in City Sidle, he gave no, me no, permission. No, no, don't insult in City Sidle, but you can insult me. Okay. Alright. Will do. I'm okay with this. Mind this criticism. Well, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in Arrow vs. Insidious Idol, which is coming out right now.